Well, I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really hear the music, do ya? Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift, the holy king composing. Faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her shining on the roof, her beauty and the moonlight overthrew ya. She tied you to her kitchen chair, and she made your throne, and she combed your hair, and from your lips she drew the hallelujah. But baby, I've been here before I've seen this room and I've walked this floor You know I used to live alone before I knew ya And I've seen your flag on the marble lodge And love is not a victory march It's a clear and unbroken Welcome, Namaste. Let us take this moment for ourselves to deeply connect within 
our sins. You may like to sit down, make yourself comfortable. Just bring awareness to your body. and gently ask yourself to relax relax your shoulders relax your arms your hands your neck your chest and let your whole body sink into your chair Enjoy this comfort that you have gifted to yourself. Your presence is a divine presence. The presence that you gift yourself is priceless. It is this presence that our soul yearns for. Let us nourish our souls with this divine presence. Let go of any thoughts of past or future. Just be still and present in the present moment and as you relax more and more take your attention to your heart space This is the place where you communicate with the whole of creation, with the entire universe and with your beloved creator, God. Feel that flow of loving energy and communication in your heart. Just remain present and feel the flow. It's as if your inner heart center is breathing breathing in and breathing out golden energetic light this energetic light is coming from your source let this light spread as this light is spreading in your body through your veins all the way to your tips of your toes the tips of your hands and fingers you are feeling peace you are feeling refreshed you are feeling renewed
now gather yourself and take this refreshed vibration throughout your day as you come back to your heart center you may melt these vibrations in your heart and come back to yourself in your room and you may open your eyes when you are ready namaste Hello and welcome to our Sunday service card reading. My name is Dennis and I'm Nicole and we're Twin Flames in Union and yes we will be doing today's card reading for the summer and the deck we're using is the Everyday Miracles by Robert and Tolly Holden and we've already put three cards and we'll get right into it. So the first card we have is, I am affected only by my thoughts. And on the back of the card it says, seek not to change the world, but choose to change your mind about the world. What you see reflects your thinking and your thinking but reflects your choice of what you want to see. What do you get from this? Yeah, that you have the power to create in your reality and no one can take away your peace and that it's safe to claim your power back here and yeah, create in your reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I feel it also speaks to like really realizing on a deeper level that like everything you you experience in your reality comes from within and that living a spiritual life means living from the inside out and not from the outside in as in like you don't have to wait for anything to change in your reality for you to feel different but rather you you heal within you do the mirror exercise you make different choices you release ego and separation consciousness and start feeling good within and then that is what changes your external reality and that's really where your power lies within you and that's also what yeah Jeff and Shalia say in the in the book about the mirror exercise that it's really it really teaches you to realize that like nothing outside of you and no one outside of you can make you feel any specific way or make you feel bad but that's all like within you and what the mirror exercise really does is teach you to to completely take your power back from anything outside of yourself and give yourself on the inside what you need and make yourself feel good and happy and peaceful from within and then create a peaceful and happy reality from within that's yeah. perfect thank you <laughs> So, ready to move to the next card? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the second card we have is light and joy and peace abide in me. And on the back of the card, it says, You are as God created you, not what you made of yourself. Whatever evil you may think you did, you are as God created you. Whatever mistakes you made, the truth about you is unchanged. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. When, when I first saw this card, I, I instantly had to think about a quote I read today by Yogananda. Um, and I saw that on Twitter. I was just scrolling on Twitter today and reading Yogananda quotes. And one thing she said was that like a saint is a sinner who just kept going and kept healing. This is a bit paraphrased, but like that was like in that sentence, she used the word sinner and saint and like a saint is some, a sinner who just kept going and kept healing separation consciousness. And I feel that's really what this card speaks about. That like whatever 
upsets you have, whatever choices of separation you made, whatever evil you chose, um, whatever mistakes you made as in like what, in whatever place inside of you, you went against God, that is not anything that defines you or that is eternal or that is real or that has any power. And if you just keep going, you can completely heal anything and um, become one with God in every part of your consciousness again. And yeah, I think it really like um, reinforces this the message from the first card in the sense that you have you, you have the power and you can make different choices and nothing outside of you, nothing that you did or nothing even inside of you that is not based in love has any power. Mm -hmm. Do you have something to add? That we are innocent and that it's safe to claim your innocence and don't identify yourself with um, what's right or what's wrong and that mm -hmm. it's safe to learn and to not know at the point where you're at and to just keep going and yeah that it's safe to not know before you learn the lesson and to not perceive yourself as evil or bad when you're on the way to your true authentic self Mm -hmm. that's perfect and yeah, another thing that came to me is that like the way as the cut says the way that god created you like you can't you can't change how god created you like you can't make yourself bad or lose your inner sense or become and not love like something that you're not like the truth of who you are always stays the same mm -hmm. and all we're doing is remembering that and coming back to to like, yeah, seeing who we really are and remembering who we really are and aligning with that. Yeah. So the last card we have is I rest in God. And on the back it says, there is a place in you where nothing is impossible. There is a place in you where the strength of God abides. What do you get from this? Um... I remember uh, when Jeff said in the last group coaching that there is a place inside of you where you feel completely resting in God, where everything is okay and you're feeling no upsets and you really feel like home, like complete. And this is, it's safe to fill yourself up there and to give yourself all what you need to um, rest in God and be one with God. And I love when Chef and Shalia share when you're one, when you're in this state of oneness with God is where you meet me. This is, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. In love, we're all one. Yeah. Of course, the miracle says that in heaven, love is the same as union, or union is the same as, like love and union are the same. And that's really what, yeah, union and perfect union means, is being completely, perfectly one with love. And yeah, there's a place inside of you, at your core, where that's already, where that's already the truth of like who you are, your existence. You are love, you are one, your being is one with God's being, you're an extension of God's being. That's something else that Jeff and Shalia talked about in the last group coaching mm -hmm. class. So you, your being is love and it's safe to connect <clears throat> with that part of yourself where you're already perfectly one with God and yeah, allow yourself to be filled up by that feeling of oneness and that place inside of you. Do you feel complete? Mm, yeah. Well then, that was our card reading and enjoy the rest of the Sunday service. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hello and welcome. My name is Fabian and as a unionist, I am happy to introduce us to today's beautiful sermon 
by our Ministers of Union, Danny and Christina, on the topic, how to conquer challenges. And we are going to learn so much in it. We are going to learn, well, how to conquer our challenges and to how to deepen our peace, how to grow stronger and what it means to really practically move through our challenges and so much more. So, as you know, life can be challenging at times. It is not just the twin flame journey, the spiritual journey. This is something that every human being knows. That feeling of, ooh, there's a challenge to overcome. I have this meeting at work on Friday and I have to prepare this presentation. And I feel this is something a little bit outside of my comfort zone, perhaps. And so I feel there's a challenge there. I have to present these important numbers and it's a challenge. And yeah, there are some feelings to move through there and maybe it is a little bit uncomfortable. But you as a human being have experienced this feeling before. And this feeling is really good because it shows you that there's something that helps you grow. Moving through this uncomfortable feeling, through the discomfort, is actually improving you, is shaping you, is honing you. And eventually, as you move through all of these feelings, you come to learn that this feeling is actually really good because I am leveling up in my life right now. And so showing up at work on Friday and being prepared and giving this presentation, you have successfully overcome the resistance to becoming stronger, a stronger version of yourself. And how do you feel afterward? Well, relief usually, right? You feel like, I did it, I showed up, I conquered my challenge, I faced it, and I did it, I gave my best. And you know, maybe I have to learn, maybe I have to improve still, but I, I am receiving my next piece. And that's the beauty of life. It is really an environment to help us become our truest, most pure self. And we are experiencing this as unionists with, yeah, with everyone on the planet together not only improving ourselves, but improving life in general. And yeah, sometimes you encounter bigger problems and greater discomfort, but it is always going to help you grow. And of course, there are um, feelings. There's, there's a feeling of discomfort that is not really serving you, like not every feeling of discomfort is pointing you towards growth, right? There's also um, just things out there that are not meant for you to do. And so it comes down to following the good feeling and following the passion, right? If you have a purpose, a calling and a passion, it points you into a very specific direction. And going there, following that feeling is what is leading you, um, you know, deeper into your success and life purpose. So you have probably seen this meme out there that um, has a circle in and written in it is the word comfort zone. 
And then there is an arrow outside of uh, that comfort zone and it points to another word which says growth, right? So growing and growth happens outside of the comfort zone. And when you get used to that, you will build momentum in your life. And this can create a really beautiful upwards spiral of success. So you really collect points, right? And maybe you notice that there's a little bit of a resistance to um, handling the taxes, but you feel there's a calling there and you're not to do it. So you're handling the taxes. And now that you have done the taxes, you feel a little bit freer, a little bit more powerful and a little bit more calm and centered. And then there's a next piece. Oh, I want to um, clean my dishes, right? And then you have that done, overcomes a little bit of a resistance there and you feel even better. And you collect good momentum, good feelings there. And that can propel you through your day and you will end every day when you follow this mechanic in a blissful state, because you have spent your day growing, you have spent your day living life. Living life um, is what happens when you leave your comfort zone behind. And so as you practice that you eventually become it. And then you are just that. And this is something that uh, I discussed with my Ascension coaches, Lorenzo and Alexandra. And I also know that Jeff is talking a lot about that. Talking about that he is living life at the edge of uh, his consciousness or consciousness in general, right? And that is where expansion happens. The comfort does not come from comfort zone. The comfort comes from being with God and God wants you to live with him at the edge of consciousness, at the edge of your consciousness. That is where the magic happens. That is where life begins. And it is only ever a choice away right, to face the next thing that is for you to do and then just do it. Yeah. In Today's sermon, Danny and Christina are delivering a beautiful sermon. They are going much deeper into all of that. And we are also learning about um, compassion, deep compassion and forgiveness and how exactly to move through these challenges that we may encounter. And on top of that, we are learning about a cross country swimmer that shares an inspiring story that is really helping us understand everything in regards to conquering our challenges. And I was really um, amazed how beautiful the sermon is today. It is the best sermon yet by Danny and Christina, and it was delivered in such a heartful and passionate and joyful way. So without further ado, please enjoy today's sermon. Hi, my name is Danny. And my name is Christina. And we are your uh, ministers of union for today, uh, Sunday service, here to bring you a really juicy sermon. So before we get started, let's start with our opening ohms and our opening prayer. And you can follow out loud or in your heart, whichever feels better to you.
and our opening prayer. I am the only child of God, forever part of him. I am created by him in perfection, and there I always remain. My mind is my sanctuary, where I keep his holy creation sacred. I will only allow in his voice. I will only accept his word. Today, I will hear the word of God. I surrender myself to his teachings through his divine channel. I will honor what he has spoken and accept it as his will. I will be obedient to his word, for this is my salvation. In Christ's name, Om, Amen. Perfect. Well, we are talking today about how to move through challenges and to mm-hmm. prioritize your peace through mm-hmm. through those challenges and yeah. what the meaning of challenges are and how it relates to power, mm-hmm. personal yeah. power. Yeah, and their purpose on your ascension journey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so the first thing that um, we want to talk about is like, what is the purpose of challenges? Mm-hmm. Um, challenges are meant to strengthen you and to actually help you challenges are opportunities Mm -hmm. um i'd say that most people look at challenges or you know a lot a lot of people look at challenges as something that um you know is trying to prevent you Mm -hmm. Yeah. In some way. Mm-hmm. Or like conquer you. Or, or to conquer you or to overpower you in some way or to make mm-hmm. things harder uh, for some reason. Right. Yeah. But yeah. challenges actually pave the way to your dream. And whenever you're experiencing challenges, it's actually a sign that you're growing and that you're healing and that you have good things coming your way because mm-hmm. greater things always require greater strength. Yep. And there's only one way to grow strength, and that's through using our spiritual muscles, which <laughs> challenges help us do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so challenges are opportunities to uh, succeed. Yeah, did you want to read the quote by Sharia? Yeah. Um, yeah, Shalia said recently, um, you know, in, in a comment, just really spoke to us when we were grounding in this sermon, she said, challenges are opportunities and you can succeed. To believe otherwise is to systematically disempower yourself, mm-hmm. which is really true. Mm-hmm. And um, we've been really grounding into this lesson lately. Yeah, that like mm-hmm. any challenge that comes your way, that's something that you can conquer and that you can have and that's part of your eternal foundation mm-hmm. because yeah, your foundation is a foundation of peace. It's your relationship with God. And so prioritizing your peace um, as you're working through a challenge is what allows you to move through it more quickly. And I felt like you had a lot to say about that, about like prioritizing your peace. Yeah, like um, prioritizing peace is coming into your power as well. Um, through right. through challenges and it really um, helps to move you through them mm-hmm. because like as you go deeper in your ascension path you start building spiritual strength and as you start building spiritual strength you start to heal deeper and larger challenges. blocks and challenges yeah. um which is actually a very good thing because you are um, rooting out all of the things, right? Mm-hmm. And in, in one of um, uh, Jeff and Shalia's like, recent classes, um, Shalia mentioned that it really only takes like a couple years, like a few years, maybe like a couple <laughs> years, it, it's well, i guess it's slightly Don't different for everyone slightly years. different for everyone but like it doesn't take relatively long to just commit to the inner work commit mm-hmm. to your ascension path walk yourself through and out of hell mm-hmm. and you're there and you're in a place where your life is completely transformed moving through challenges is no mm-hmm. longer 
a challenge really. Um, everything becomes easier the more that you heal. Yeah. And it's worth it. It's worth moving through the challenges and to, to, and to do that. And yeah, so I guess mm -hmm. we wanted to focus on like why peace is so important. Why mm -hmm. prioritizing peace through challenges is so important. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. I feel like one thing I want to say before like you get started is that like claiming your peace is the same as claiming your power. Because power comes from peace. And so when you're in a state of peace, you're in a state of power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's very true. And peace also builds your foundation um, for your heaven on earth and beyond. It mm -hmm. builds your whole uh, heavenly life is through peace. And um, the lie that ego tells you is that peace is later once you do this, you'll feel peaceful. Yeah. Once you have that, you'll feel peaceful. Or once this challenge is over, you'll be peaceful. Yep. And <clears throat> that causes like a lot of misery because you're always going to be in a state of like growth and also like obstacles and new difficulties and challenges. And so if you're in a state of thinking that peace is going to be after that, it's just never going to come. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like your your present moment is what builds your reality. It has nothing to do with the past and nothing mm -hmm. to do with the future. Um, your present moment is what is building your life. And the way that you build your um, heavenly life is through peace and peace only. So um, like lately we've had like... Uh, to ground this in deeper. So like when you live a life where, um, and most people live this life, at least adults, mm -hmm. right? We're busy, right? Yeah. We have mm -hmm. lots of tasks, lots of things Projects, to do. chores, people wanting like our attention mm -hmm. or businesses, like. Yep. Yeah, sorry, continue. No, yeah, you're good. You're just expanding what I'm yes. saying. So um, when you have so many things to do, so many things to accomplish, um, and you have goals, right? And things to maintain. Um, it's incredibly important to prioritize your peace through mm -hmm. all of those things. So if you're, um, you know, particularly busy, I guess there's like a time where you're like moving through a lot of doing, right? Mm -hmm. And we go through phases where there's a lot of work and then there's periods of rest and then work again. But mm -hmm. through all of it, um, especially through the busy times, we can um, sometimes allow ourselves to become overwhelmed or stressed. Right. Or like swept up with the current. Right. But that doesn't need to happen mm -hmm. because um, you can choose peace. And I guess mm -hmm. we can provide like a practical example. Mm -hmm. Like, is there anything coming to your mind? Like when you're in that kind of situation, what do you do? Yeah, like, you know, you mean like when I have a lot of stuff on my to do list, all of a sudden, like it all piles up. Yeah. And like, yeah. Yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. like, this has been something I've been working through a lot, like mm -hmm. recently, but yeah, like, you know, when you have people calling for attention all different places, like your job or um, whatever it is, it can be really easy to like think about all the things that you have to do and kind of just like overwhelm yourself with your list of things to do or like kind of like the chicken with the, its head cut off kind of like running around in your mind. And um, yeah, like I used to get really swept up by that and like run around the house like crazy and be like, oh my goodness, all this stuff, ah, so stressed. But like, um, all of that just like leaks your energy and it doesn't really accomplish or help you in any way. It, like I realized it didn't help me. It didn't help me be more productive. Like it literally just felt bad. And so like I came to this awareness that I could just choose peace in that moment and just choose peace no matter what. And even if, you know, you have like a daunting to-do list, it's like, well, I can stress about it or I can just feel peaceful and it won't affect the outcome. I mean, if anything, peace will make you be more productive. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, just like choosing peace in that instance and 
just like giving yourself space to feel your feelings and to take a step back and not let it have power over you or not give your power away. Um, yeah, so that's what I've been doing is just claiming my peace and choosing my peace and not choosing that stressed out bad feeling because it doesn't accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, everything always gets done. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and I like to like bring up, like go deeper there um, and bring attention to like the deeper challenges that you go through. So like the day-to-day -day stuff, that's challenging mm -hmm. within itself. And then there's the deeper layer of like, let's just say you're moving through like a deep block, like a core block in your union, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. um, or like in your life purpose. Or in your life purpose. And you're, you know, moving through it. And it's it's a big one. It's like one that, that <laughs> it's, it's one. okay. Well, <laughs> big one in the sense that, um, it's like more it's, challenging and deeply rooted. Yeah. It's, it's like more of a deeply rooted pattern that you have to root out over mm -hmm. a period of, um, a lot of, I would say just effort in your inner work. Yeah. Persistence. Persistence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like with these deeper challenges, um, it can be easy to, sometimes get lost in it mm -hmm. um, and identify with it and um, also use it to like use the awareness mm -hmm. of the pattern that you're uprooting to um, not be nice to yourself, not be kind to yeah, yourself, like judge yourself, to judge yourself um, and to beat yourself up over things um, that is I guess something that I really wanted to touch upon because we can do this sometimes mm -hmm. and um, we don't need to. Right. And so what I'm really learning is that it's not necessary at all. And um, it's really worth cultivating the inner compassion to move you through challenges yeah. and things like that mm -hmm. because if you have compassion for yourself and i'm saying like deep unconditional compassion doesn't matter what it is you're moving through it doesn't matter what um gross stuff is coming to the surface to heal having unconditional compassion and unconditional forgiveness for yourself mm -hmm. moving through it will allow you to be peaceful much more easily mm -hmm. when you're moving through stuff. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I'm like really deeply learning right now is that um, I truly deserve compassion and I truly mm -hmm. deserve um, forgiveness and all mm -hmm. of that stuff. And it helps me to really claim my peace and... Mm -hmm. um, move through things much more quickly. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, like, um, what that was really important. Like, when you're moving through something, I feel like it's it can be easy to judge yourself or say, like, you can't feel peaceful until after you move through it because peace is on the other side. And while that's true on some level, that there's deep peace on the other side, peace is always now in this moment. And no matter what's going on, no matter what it looks like on the outside, none of that really matters. It just matters how you're feeling on the inside. Mm -hmm. And if you're genuinely choosing to move through whatever is arising, that's all that matters. It right. only matters what you're choosing now. Right. And to truly move through it. Like, yeah, to truly move through it. Because I feel like, um, you know, it can also, like, when we say, like, peace first, it can also sometimes be taken um, with the impression that like you bypass the bad feelings and just choose to feel peaceful and right. choose to feel good. Like, oh, oh yeah, is pain is not the way peace is. So I'm just going to choose peace and that's it and mm -hmm. just ignore the bad. And that keeps you in the same spot spiritually. Um Peace is important as you're moving through mm -hmm. 
your challenges and, mm-hmm. and your feelings. So it's really important to always feel your feelings. Mm-hmm. It's okay if it you doesn't like feel good or that. if you yeah. don't like it or <laughs> if it's, uh, you know, if it's uh, maybe it's like the same um, upset, maybe you're moving through like a deep pattern, right? And so the same upset comes up um, in different areas of your life as you're moving through it, as you're mm-hmm. getting to the core and healing it and you really don't like it and you don't like that it keeps coming up, mm-hmm. um, it's okay to accept that. It's okay to like feel your feelings there too and to yeah. be with yourself and to give yourself compassion because mm-hmm. you deserve it. You're doing deep work. Mm-hmm. Like you're choosing to love yourself. And as long as you choose to love yourself, no matter what comes up and you truly choose to move through things, um, that will that will move you through. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Yeah, and I think we should tell the story now. Okay. That sounds good to me. Uh there is this really inspiring story um that we heard. I'd actually heard it before, but we were listening to um a uh sermon um by the Self-Realization Fellowship. Yep. Mhm. Yeah, and he uh, shared this story at the end of his sermon about this swimmer. And this was like a a really, really good swimmer. She wanted to... Cross-country swimmer. Yeah, cross-country swimmer. She wanted to swim this strait. I yeah, think it was it a was, straight, right? What's a straight? It's like a, uh, it's like a long. Oh yeah, river. it's like it was like a twenty-six mile swim from, I think it was the coast of California to Catalina Island. Uh huh. So yeah, if you wanted to know, that's <laughs> it's like a long twenty-six mile stretch. Yeah, and so it like along the coast. It yeah, it takes a really long time. Like Sixteen of, hours. Yeah, like to swim it, and so um, she attempted this the first time. And she was like 15 hours into the swim. And um, she didn't know how long it was going to take, by the way, to like reach the end. She just like started and was like, okay, I'm just going to keep going until I finish. And um, they had like a boat follow her too. So, you know, safety precautions. (laughs) But um, yeah, so like she was like 15 hours in and then this heavy fog settled in. So she could not see around her or in front of her at all. Mm -hmm. And so she just kept swimming. Um, And I believe actually the fog was there like several hours Mm -hmm. to this point. She got like 15 hours in and she gave up and she was like, oh, I, I can't see anything. I think. I think I'm done. Yeah, she got to this point where like she had no idea where she was. Like she didn't know if she was, you know, a minute away or like five more hours. So she was just like, okay, well, I'm good for now. Like, right. I'm tired. Yeah. Yeah. And then she found out that she was a half mile okay, away. Okay, well, this was after she quit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. She was a half mile away from Reaching the finish, line. the finish line. And, um, so, you know, in an interview, she was like, if I knew that I was just a half mile out, I would have not quit. Mm-hmm. And so what she did was she, instead of, you know, having this challenge um, of swimming and like, you know, failing it, she didn't use it to beat herself up mm-hmm. about it. She didn't use it to, um, you know, give up on herself. Mm-hmm. She actually used it to motivate her to try again. again. Mm -hmm. So she tried again and she did it. She Mm -hmm. completed it um, because she was very determined. She was even more determined Mm -hmm. than uh, the first time that she tried it. And so I just really like that story. Yeah. And yeah, it was like the lesson and the moral of the story was um, like if Many times when we're going through hard challenges, we like want to give up, but we don't realize how close we are to the finish line or like we're about to break through. And it was like when it feels the hardest and like the most challenging is like when you're about to break through. 
Yeah. Like when it was the hardest for her to keep going, she was half a mile out from being done. And so, yeah, it was just like a good story about not giving up on yourself, on persistence. And um, yeah, like just keep swimming. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and knowing that peace carries you through and uh, peace allows you to connect with your power and to not allow um, not allow any upset or any challenge mm -hmm. to um, overpower you because upsets and challenges don't actually have any power mm -hmm. over you. Um, it's just it's just an illusion. And so when we're moving through some deep stuff, or things that are challenging to us, um, peace is the way. And whatever it is that will help to cultivate that peace, whether it's like that inner well of peace, developing deeper compassion for yourself, deeper forgiveness for yourself, um, and committing to loving yourself will cultivate that through everything. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. yeah. Do you feel complete? Yeah, I think I feel complete. I feel good. Feel good. Is there anything else you want to say? Um, well, I guess like one thing I want to say is that um, you know, if you're moving through like whatever challenge you're moving through right now, um, just know that you will succeed. All you have to do is choose it and continue to move through it. And um, yeah, that like your challenges, challenges truly are making your dreams come true. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know, I just, I still kind of want to give this example. Like mm -hmm. I just hit like, this is like gonna be funny, but I just hit like the new level of challenge and like taking care of Charlie. And I felt really discouraged and like disempowered, but then I remembered that literally like last night, I had a dream about a German Shepherd and like German Shepherds are just like near and dear to my heart. Like I love them so much. I've always wanted one. And like we'd been um, like tuning into our soul dog and I, I woke up, I told Danny about it today and Danny was like, hey, like I feel like that was Cody. Like we already have a name for him. His name is Cody. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, like, I think it's Cody, too. And we started just, like, talking about it. And um, I realized, like, when this came up that I had called in my soul pet, my soul dog, so much that this challenge came up. Because you can't have a dog and, like, not know how to take care of it properly. And so having that awareness that I had called that in was really empowering for me. And I realized that God was really loving me there. And so I chose to take the steps forward that I needed to in order to succeed. Like, of course, with the spiritual work, but I also ordered like some books <laughs> and, on like how to take care of your dog. <laughs> and so like, um, but it really like, I felt supported in doing that. And I felt empowered in doing that. I'm like, I'm going to do this. Like, it's going to go great. And so, yeah, like. It's a funny example, but it's like, I feel like it perfectly exemplifies the energy of like, when you're going through a challenge, it's because you really called it, called something in and God is guiding you to it so that you can have it. And so just remember that it's always working for you and happening for you, not happening to you. Yeah. And that just helps you stay in an empowered state. Knowing that you're in charge of your reality, you create your reality, and yeah, so you have the power to move through anything. Yep. And one last thing that I wanted to say is also mindset is really key. Um, obviously, you know, doing the proper inner work changes your mindset to like a peaceful, positive one. But um, approaching challenges with the mindset of, um, like Christina said, it's bringing me what I want mm -hmm. rather than oh no, this is not what I want, um, really changes everything. And approaching challenges as well with um, a sense of joy and fun can also be really helpful. Yeah, because... well, how can you make it fun? Like, give an example. 
Like, um, like for example, with what you just said about, um, you know, your new challenge with Charlie, mm -hmm. um, you oh, can like I made it about my soul dog. Yeah. yeah you can make it like, fun. that's yeah. fun. Like you're yeah. developing, uh, skills and healing blocks to support myself. Yeah. That's support true. yourself and to like develop the skills that you need to like take care of our soul pet. Yeah. That's true, yeah. Which is really fun. fun. Yeah. And also, like, in the meantime, like, Charlie benefits and, um, like... Everyone's loved. Everyone wins. Yeah, it's a win-win-win. Yeah. 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 So that's that's an example. And, yeah. Is there anything else that you want to say? No. I feel good now. Okay. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Well, then, with that being said, we'll go ahead and... Um, end our sermon and uh, proceed with our closing prayer mm -hmm. and closing alms. Father, I accept your word into my heart. I will honor your will in my life and will follow you without hesitation anywhere you ask. I know you guide me into your heart where I belong. I accept that you are everywhere and your teaching is in all things. God, I know you provide me clarity in this teaching of union that I may be forever in union with you. I accept that you are in me as you are in my brother. I will not deny my brother your word and will share your teaching with him in any way you ask and only as you ask. For when I share my salvation with him, I fully claim my salvation and return to you with him. In Christ's name, Om, Amen. Speaking this prayer in your heart means you have accepted that you are on the path of awakening to your true divine nature. This is what it means to be a unionist. Follow the teachings of union with God wherever you find them and purify your consciousness into perfect union with your creator. Please join us for our closing alms. Thank you and namaste. Thank you very much. Namaste. Welcome back. And thank you so much, uh, Denny and Christina, for this beautiful sermon. And thank you so much for joining us today in our Sunday service. Yeah, I really loved um, the story about the uh, cross-country swimmer and the inspiring message of really um, completing your challenges and basically never giving up, right? Having that grit, that persistence, and to conquer all these challenges moving through them. Yeah, challenges ultimately are here to help us, to strengthen us, and they are a blessing and a sign that we are doing well, that we are growing, that we are healing, that we are moving forward. And when you encounter a deep challenge, it means that you are growing deeply. And there's also uh, a dawn, a new dawn arising, right? New lights entering uh, at the same moment and blessing you with more and more success. And so um, with that being said, I invite you to the unionism.org website for all past sermons or music or meditations and card readings. And there you can also uh, donate and ties to contribute to the Church of Union's message to the world. Please like and subscribe our uh, Church of Union YouTube channel if you haven't yet. And most of all, 
come and join us for after church tea time. It is a live discussion about today's message in the Unionism Spiritual Discussion Facebook group. Thanks again for joining us. Please enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy your week. Namaste.